Okay, what's the next question here? Someone says, The Most High gave the Apostle Peter a vision in which he declared uh, that formerly unclean animals could be eaten. Well, the Most High did not give him a vision that says that unclean animals could be eaten. Go to Acts the 10th chapter. The vision he gave Peter was to prepare Peter when he awakened from that trance or sleep to receive a Gentile whose name was Cornelius. That's the reason for those unclean animals he was shown in a vision. It was never to eat pork or shrimp, crabs, or lobster. And we're going to read that. Read Acts 10 and start at the 5th verse. Acts chapter 10 verse 5. And now send men to Joppa. No, matter of fact, go up to the 1st verse. Verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Go ahead. Cornelius from the Italian band. Go ahead. A devout man. A devout man. And one that feared the Most High with all his house. Go ahead. Which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of the Most High coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. When he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before the Most High. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So the Spirit came on this Gentile, Cornelius, to, to go and see Peter. Peter had the keys to the kingdom of the Most High. So this is actual an introduction of the Gentiles into the understanding of the Most High's kingdom, into the Most High's doctrine. He had to be accepted through Peter. Read. Verse 6. He lodgeth with one, Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Now, Peter is going to direct you, Cornelius. Why? Because the Most High, the Most High set up Peter through Christ and says... Through, through this rock, I will build my church. So in order for Cornelius to be acknowledged, he had to come through the man that the Most High set up within the earth. Read. Verse 7. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto him, he sent them unto Joppa. He sent them unto Joppa. Go ahead. And on the morrow... As they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the house to pray about the sixth hour. So Peter went up to the house to pray about the sixth hour, read. And he became very hungry. Go ahead. And would have eaten. He would have eaten, go ahead. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So he fell into a trance. He went to sleep, read. And saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth go ahead wherein all manner of the four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise peter kill and eat so the so a voice told him to kill and eat while he was asleep read but peter said not so lord for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean he says i've never eaten an unclean animal so he's relating it to food right here why? Because under the Israelites' law, Leviticus 11, you are not to eat unclean food. Read. Verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again, the second time, What the Most High hath cleansed, that not call thou common. Now the problem is, when your preachers read this, they'll just give you that and close the book and say, Go eat pork. Just pray over it, and what the Most High has cleansed, you don't have to deny. But the scriptures are not saying this. Remember, he's asleep. He's in a trance. So when he wake up, he's going to fulfill this vision. Now, if he wake up and go and cut himself open a, a, a pig and start eating it, then you can say, okay, that was, that was the vision. But you have to see what he did when he awakened to know what the vision was. Read. Verse 16. This was done thrice. It was done three times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. So the vessel was received up unto heaven. Read. And while Peter doubted in himself what vision, what this vision which he had seen should mean. So Peter himself doubted what it meant. He didn't understand why the Most High had unclean animals in front of him while he was asleep telling him to eat it. 
So he doubted it when he awakened. So he's, he was still confused with the vision. So how can a preacher look at this scripture and say, well, that means eat pork, when Peter woke up and still didn't understand what it meant. So now the Most High must fulfill this vision when you read further down in the, ver in the verse. Read it. The men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Go ahead. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Go ahead. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down. So while he thought on the vision or the dream that the Most High gave him, a spirit came to him and said, Go downstairs. There's three men that await you. Now mind you, the Most High have already sent Cornelius, which is a Gentile, to Peter. Now if the Most High would not have given Peter this vision while he was asleep, and a Gentile knocked on his door, he would have rejected that Gentile. He would have told him, get away. I, I'm not allowed to sit. It's not part of our custom to even sit and talk to you. Read. And go with him, doubting nothing. So he told Peter, don't doubt what's about to happen. The Most High sent someone at your door. Go down to the 28th verse to see what it's talking about. Verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. You know as it is an unlawful thing to keep company or come to one who's of another nation. So according to the Israelites' customs, they were not to sit or eat or commune with a Gentile. But what? But the Most High have showed me that I should not call any man. Any what? Any man. Any pig. Any man. Any shrimp. Any man. Any crab. Any man. Any lobster. Any man. Any abomination. Any man. Any man what? Common or unclean. The Most High showed Peter that he cannot call any man common or unclean in the vision of the unclean animals. It had nothing to do with eating food. It had everything to do with the Israelites accepting the Gentiles that follow the true guide of the Hebrews. That's all it's talking about. This really had nothing to do with food at all. It's what the Most High used as a vehicle to get Peter to sit down and deal with Cornelius a Gentile. So I hope you got that. So there's no place in the scripture that says you can do these things. The Most High don't contradict himself. He's not the author of confusion. He's not going to tell you to do something in one hand and then tell you, oh, you can do the exact opposite of that. That means he's, you don't know what God to follow. That's totally confusing. Okay? So he's not going to tell you one thing then come back and tell you another. The Most High don't operate like that. That's man. And it, it, it's ironic that once the Christians started teaching this to pagans and the Romans, it's ironic that the Gentiles and the other people that are controlling the earth continued their heathenistic eating practices in the church and the only people that really compromised this is the people that were supposed to be upholding the law on the dietary law so the Gentiles who went in the church really didn't have to change they can continue to worship on Sunday they can continue to eat whatever they wanted to eat so what was their change? what are they changing? you can't say they're changing their heart because they're looking at the law and their heart is the same they're doing the same things they did before they got the truth, before they received the word. So what are they changing? If they continue to eat what they want to eat, worship when they want to worship, and do what they want to do. They're not changing anything. Okay? Okay, someone asked me that Matthew 15, 10, and 11, does it have anything to do with the dietary law? The answer to that is absolutely not. It has nothing to do with the dietary law. It's talking about the tradition of washing your hands before you sit down to eat food. It have nothing to do with the food you're eating. Okay? To prove that, the only thing you would need to do is take them to the first verse. Read the first verse. Verse 1. Then came to Yeshua scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Go ahead. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders. Why do the disciples transgress the, dis the traditions of the elders? Read. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So it's saying they came from outside with dirty hands 
and they didn't do the tradition of the elders and, and go into the basin and wash their hands first. They went straight to the table and started eating. So that was disrespect to, the, to those. That, that's what they were saying. It was disrespect to them. So they said that, well, hold up. How can you sit at our table and not respect our father's traditions? Washing our hands. So this is not, this don't have anything to do with pork or eating shrimp, crab, or lobster. It's talking about the dirt on their hands. So Christ came back and said, it's not what goeth into a man that follow for man. Talking about the dirt on their hands while they're eating bread. But it's what comes out of a man that, uh, that proceeded out of a man's mouth that defiles him. Okay? So again, if they were eating pork here, then you can say, well, all right, it's unclean food. All right. This is talking about dirty hands. I hope you got that.